I think we came in with expectations of just enjoying the day. Um, win or lose, the experience is, is really what the the, play, the players wanted. Um, but to come away with with the trophy and especially the manner we've done it as well in such a such a tense game, it's uh, it's exceeded all expectations. I think they want to be there. There's not a day where they come in and like, oh, this subject's boring. Because how can it be? It's video games. It's the game industry. Welcome back. I'm really pleased to be joined by Jake and Sharon. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. And we've also got two really nice shiny trophies on the table as well. So we're here at Student Champs Grand Finals and we've just been through the Nationals Finals. Uh, just start off, will you just introduce yourself, organisation, role, and then let's get straight into these things. Jake. So my name is Jake Simpson and I am a project officer and I work for the Newcastle United Foundation. Sharon? My name is Sharon Westcott and I am a programme leader and advanced technical lecturer at Newcastle College. So we're here at Nationals Finals. Talk to me about this magic on the table. What happened? I don't know where to start really. Yeah, it's, yeah. Been, it's, been a, it's been a roller coaster of emotions the day really. Um, I think we came in with expectations of just enjoying the day. Um, win or lose, the experience is, is really what the, the, play, the players wanted. Um, but to come away with, with the trophy and especially the manner we've done it as well in such a, such a tense game, it's, uh, it's exceeded all expectations I think. And it was a really close game. I looked at from a staff perspective. I saw yeah. there was some nerves there on the sidelines. Behind me, little sign. <laughs> and they did so well, didn't they? Yeah. It was such a you know to get to this level of competition, the two best teams in the country, north and south. So we've got nationals, finals, champions, and also yeah, regional Northern. champions. Not a bad season, <laughs> hey. So I'm really interested in the partnership between the two of you. Um, you know, we've got Newcastle College and Newcastle United Foundation. Tell us a little bit about that in terms of that partnership, you know, why you work together. Obviously, that's having a really good impact in terms of the student experience. But yeah, tell us a little bit more from an organisational perspective. Who does what? Yeah, so I lead primarily on the student champ side of things. So we work in partnership to deliver a level three and a level two BTEC in esports. So at the foundation, we take on the level three side of things. So that's delivered from our building, our facilities um, and the college uh, is is right there as well. Yeah, so um, we started off quite small. We only had um, one sort of cohort of students the first year. We only had one level three, and then we got so popular and it became so good that we had to we had to bring in the foundations. Another foundation take on our entire year two for us. So that gives the students who've got a good foundation from uh, academically from us, they go onto the foundation and they get the the industry and the actual experience of being in esports that side of it. Um, the student champs, um, the first year we ran the student champs, it was it was a challenge, I have to say, being a lecturer and doing everything. Um, and my predecessor had done it as well. But then having the foundation support there, I say we could not be where we are right now if it was not for this man slash right here. Um, it's just been a really strong partnership between the both of us, between the academic side and the, the more experienced and the vocational side of it. It's, it's just a really good gel together. We work really well. And it's come out with an absolutely fantastic experience. So I've had the experience of seeing the students today start from some of them from level two and they're now leaving and they're leaving so much more confident and happier and they've got lots and lots of skills, not just esports. And it's it's taken them on and we've seen that we've got students that now work for the foundation as well because of the, the British esports and the, the qualification. And I think that's where the foundation comes into it as well because... Yeah. At the foundation, we're really led on outcomes, really. So we have the contacts within our own teams to reach out to other programmes. Like we've got an employability team that have uh, been great and given the students experiences with, like obviously work experience, but then also opportunities with local businesses and organisations. So our learners last year all got a guaranteed interview at Sage, and oh, they all got amazing. they all got uh, yeah. really taught how to write their own CV, get some interview preparation, stuff like that, and then a guaranteed interview at the end, and a couple of them have uh, gotten jobs out of that. So it's, And that's it's not there. just about jobs in the esports industry, is it? It's, and this is where I think the model is really interesting, yeah. where at first glance you might go football club and esports and you know as the foundation the charitable arm but Jay, you've got a bit of a background in esports performance as well, haven't you? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, so before... My current job role, I used to play professional FIFA, so I represented Newcastle United at the E Premier League uh, three three years. So uh, I've I'm tried my best to pass on some experience today. I was never lucky enough to win a, a big national trophy at Alan, uh, 
but I think a part of us got fulfilled today watching uh, our students lift the trophy in front of in front of a live audience. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And what what have you done then, respectively, in terms of the build up to such a big event like this, where there's going to be a lot of nerves, there's a lot at stake, there's a lot of pressure. Obviously, students are. You said they're coming here to have a great experience, a great day, but of course they all want to win. They're all here to compete and to win. What's the build up been like, and what have you done, respectively, from a college perspective and a foundation perspective with with the students? So for me, working with the students from September, um, all the way from week one, I could see that we had a real ch a real chance to. Uh, to make something out of it because the team talent wise was apparent really quickly so uh, I think over the the ups and downs through the season I could see how they react to certain situations so rather than just imposing myself on them and like sort of di directing and dictating how to, how to behave I sort of really took a step back and let them figure it out for themselves really um, because as a group of four three players and a coach they've Sort of stumbled upon different obstacles throughout the throughout the so season. One of the players is the coach, correct? As yeah, well, yeah. and then so you've got your role overseeing it. But I think that's really interesting as well because it's not only that you're there in a coaching capacity, but you've also got a student yeah, coach. Yeah. And again, amazing. that's where it overlaps with the educational side as well. So the coach is a part of our cohort that studies level level three esports. So one of the units there is esports coaching. So they're applying stuff that they've been learning Monday to Friday in the classroom in a scenario on a stage in front of X amount of people lifting the trophy. So it's a, a real, a real, uh, it's a great end to the, to the season. Oh, amazing. And what about from, from your role and thinking about the academic side and the more the curriculum side, you know, the yeah. modules, touching on Jake's point, how does some of the modules that they might have studied with yourselves, you know, whether it's level two or in year one, we're talking a lot to learners about some quite broad subjects, but actually, they can have a real impact when it comes to moments like this on performance. What what have you worked with the students on? Um, I mean, the last few weeks we have been building on um, just confidence and sort of um, teamwork and, and sort of communication. I mean, they go all the way through IT. So we, we have those as a core in any way and we've pulled them out because um, one of our uh, students has actually got an interview in the morning <laughs> at nine o'clock, bless him, for um, an apprenticeship. So he's now going to be able to walk into that apprenticeship interview in the morning yeah. full of confidence and he's got all of those soft skills that even though it's come from a gaming side, you can take it into an IT career, you could take it into esports if you wanted to. And that's where the foundation link comes in really well because they've got a lot more freedom, as it were, to kind of pursue sort of like the the work side of it in all of the contacts, whereas we've got the side where we build the academic side, but we also build in the vocational um, skills and the studies. Um, and it's it's just, it's we're kind of like bounce off each other and it's like anything that one side is missing, the other side can put in. So we all just come into a, a big hole, which has given the students like one of the best experiences I've had as, an, as a teacher in the, the 10 plus years I've been teaching. Yeah, it's, it's so good to see, isn't it? It has such a big impact on young people's lives. And yeah. I talk about this a lot with people and say, th this is really transforming lives. It's, it's giving young people something, an opportunity to represent, to form communities, to form friendships. And I think what's great here is they've then got that link into industry. And that, like I said, that, that could be Sage, that could be the club itself, it could be the foundation. You've got an example of a student who's been through that pathway who's now working with yourselves as well. Is yeah, that right? that's correct. So Kyle Madison, um, done the entirety of the level three B text year one and year two. And then at the end of um, the second year, he put in some time over the summer to come and work with us at the foundation to see a bit of what, what we do with the, regards to the community. So we've got our own uh, esports space that we open up to the community doing after school clubs and stuff like that and birthday parties. So Kyle volunteered over the summer to see what I do on a day to day basis. And then at the end of that, we took him on as a sessional member of staff, like working weekends, doing kids birthday parties after school clubs and stuff like that. And he's now a full time member of uh, staff at the Newcastle United Foundation doing all sorts of different things uh, in regards to community community work. It's amazing. And just, again, just to elaborate on that community work a little bit, again, I think it's important once you've got the esports programme and you've got the students that can be potential future workforce, that can give experience to current students. Touching on how esports can be a positive thing and a facility and a space as a, as a foundation, as the charitable arm of the football club, you do so much work out there in the community. How does having that esports facility right at the heart within your sports centre, how is that helping you in terms of community engagement, bringing young people in, you know, warm space, homework, STEM activities, you do all of those outreach. Can you just 
tell us a bit more about that and the impact that that's having. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So everything that we do as a foundation, I'd be here for hours explaining everything <laughs> that we do. Uh, but in terms of esports, with our after school clubs, we open up our esports room uh, to eight to eleven year olds and then twelve to fourteen year olds after school, four pm to five pm, so they can come along into a safe space and learn some digital soft skills without really realizing. So like they're playing with their friends, but really what they're doing is they're opening up like communication skills, making new friends, and the retention rate on those clubs is ridiculous. Like obviously we can only house 16 spaces at a time, but I think we've probably outgrown that room already. Yeah. We could easily have 50 kids every night uh, in, in that space. So we'll have kids who came for the first time and could not use a mouse and keyboard because yeah. um, they don't have access to anything like that at home where we can give them access to the latest games with high technology and they're coming in and they, ha they go from not being able to use a mouse and keyboard to then six months down the line, they're part of a friend group that come not only to the esports sessions, but also the multi-skills sessions, the football sessions, and they've got a real a real safe space to come and, come and spend their evenings. I think that's the key point then. It's esports is the engagement tool initially. And again, we, we speak a lot about what else you can then do. So yeah. the esports thing is that that's the hook, that's what we love. That's what's going to bring us to the door. And some of those young people might actually, whilst you know they're in Newcastle and they know who the football club are, they might not be sports people. They might not want to come to the football programme. But as a result of getting them in the building, we can develop those digital skills. We can form communities. Then, then you can get them physically active. Yep. Then you can target employability. And then brilliantly, there's then an academic link through this re-engagement with young people to then go, well, if you really love this, Here's the course yeah. and over to you. And is that something that you've seen now starting to develop? A lot of it coming through with the foundation, yeah. It's definitely targeting kids that ne wouldn't necessarily have those opportunities. Um, we are in Newcastle, obviously, and um, where we are in the college, it's one of the lowest socioeconomic um, income bands in the country. So, yeah, a lot of kids don't have access to the internet or computers at home. And getting those kids through the door of the foundation and then getting them involved in everything else and slowly pulling them up into the college as well it's it's giving those kids um chances like opportunities to actually be who they could be yeah. it's it's things like kids who would never even think they could get to college can they can see that they don't have to be academically book smart to actually be successful in life and they can come up through different pathways and that's one of the things that i love about esports because i'm technically um lecturer of computer programming but I'm an absolute massive nerd and gamer. So I pull all of that gaming in at all of my lessons as well. So the esports doesn't just sit in that qualification. It also sits in the IT side. So we've got kids on the team today who are actually doing an IT qualification, but love the esports. And they've pulled all of those skills they've got from esports and put it into their IT qualifications as well. So it's just, it brings everyone together and it gives, gives the children that wouldn't necessarily have it again, like the opportunities to actually excel it's and, and be amazing. good at something. Well, th thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think that'll be incredibly valuable for people that are listening, that maybe are at the start of the eSports journey or people might have started to deliver thinking, how can we how can we improve this? How can we develop partnerships? And again, I just this is a great example of that pathway and that progression. And not only are we seeing the impact in terms of performance as national champions and regional champions, but I think importantly, all of those young people that are coming through the programme, they're developing so much and it's having a huge impact on their personal lives and, and career progression. So congratulations on an amazing programme. Congratulations on a great day out at Student Champs Finals. And we're really looking forward to seeing the successes that continue to emerge, no doubt, from Newcastle College and Newcastle United Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Much, Callum. Hope you're sharing Cheers. Yeah, thank you. So I'm delighted to be joined now by Andrew and Kuba from Burnley College. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Um, just tell us a little bit, who are you, where are you from, what are you doing here today? Andrew, over to you first. Uh, yes, my name's Andrew. Um, I'm one of the lecturers over at Burnley College. Um, I teach esports um, and we're here today to watch uh, our students win, win? the uh, national final for Valorant. No pressure. Kuba, what do you think? How's it going to go? Easy win, 2 0. E easy win? 2 0 for us. And who are you playing against today? Cornell Cyphers. Cornell Cyphers. What's what's it been like here today then? Tell us about your experience. What What's today been like and this weekend been like? Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's honestly amazing. The scrim rooms, the PCs, the experience that we get, and just basically the memories as well. Oh, amazing. We had, a, never we had a little walk around yesterday and, and yes. we were saying, this is amazing. What, yeah. What's your thoughts, you know, in terms of bringing a group of students to something like this? 
Yeah, I mean, it's 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 industry led. This isn't it. It's it's perfect from the production gallery. Um, I studied television and broadcast ten years ago, and the facilities we had then aren't even as good as the ones that you have in this building, which is incredible to to imagine. So yeah, you've got the best facilities. Um, and it's just, it's very public orientated as well. So you've got all the PCs that are available around the cafe. So it's, it's not just a spectating venue or a training venue. It's for everyone, which I really like. Amazing. So just to give us a little bit of context in terms of the, the build up to today to, uh, you know, we're here at the student champs nationals finals, two teams in the whole country have, have got to this stage from a playing perspective, from your point of view, how have you and your teammates prepared for an event and a final like this? Oh, just basically train, uh, train together, play together, uh, find out our weaknesses and strengths, who is supposed to play, what agent, and just basically a lot of work and team play. Yeah, and what about from a, from a staff and a coach perspective? How, how have you worked with the team? Um, probably not the answer you're ready for, but we haven't. <laughs> it's been it's been completely student led, and well, that's that's, that's the way we like to do it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's no way I could coach these guys in Valorant. I don't think there's many people in the country who could coach these guys at Valorant. Um, so it's completely student led. They know what they want to do. We give them the tools to do it. We give them the facilities, the equipment, um, the time, and then obviously our knowledge when it comes to stuff like capturing recordings, how you replay them, stuff like that. But yeah, it's 99.9% .9 student-led. So everything you see today is a product yeah. of these guys. I think that's that's the beauty, isn't it? We we speak to, as British Esports, we speak to so many education institutions, potential teachers, and the, there's sometimes a bit of a fear factor around, you know, do I as a teacher have the ability to teach esports and support students? And I think that's a great example that you, you, we do, we're not the expert, in nope. the game, we're not. It's about can we create the environment and the facilities and let let these guys be the ones that actually shine and that lead. And I think that's that's really powerful. Yeah, to, to be comfortable in in that role. Um, in terms of the teaching side, then Andrew, what do you deliver at Burnley College? What does the curriculum pathway look like? So it starts all the way at level one. Um, we have a level one that is a combined game design, media, and esports course, and then that goes straight into the level two, which is the Pearson um, esports B Tech. Uh, then into the level three. And now as of 2024 to 2025, we're doing the HNC in eSports, which will be delivered from our new university building on site. Amazing. And how, how have you found, because you've been on a real journey over the last few years. For sure. I think, again, for anyone listening, I know I'm not speaking for you. I know, I know I'm not saying anything that you wouldn't say, but you, you've hosted lots of other people for visits. You've had other colleges coming to see what you've been doing. So uh, just another great example at Burnley of developing that full yeah. pathway and you've been on a real journey so lots of experience in, in esports just from a, a student perspective then you started at level two I started and now you're on level two tell us a bit about your journey you know what what have you particularly enjoyed about the course side of things the course side of things well first of all i have to mention the teachers they're very good teachers very funny like that. <laughs> <laughs> honestly i think the best part of the whole course were the teachers because um they're just funny and amazing, and I know what they're talking about. Course-wise, um, I've learned a lot about the um, industry, how it works, how, for example, um, how much it's worth. Um, that it is basically like the biggest growing industry in the world right now. How to manage business, and even things that I didn't know were linked to esports, like um, nutrition and dieting. That's that was a shock to me, and yeah. But I think we, really, when it, especially when you get to this stage, really important. We talk mm -hmm. about performance, that yeah. healthy body, and how healthy we can mind. Boost the performance, how we can help you get better, basically. Absolutely. And you mentioned earlier we were talking a little bit about that business side of things. I think, again, there's a misconception with esports initially that parents or students or careers advisor might just think that you guys are coming to college just to play games all day. That's, that's You've got the team, <laughs> haven't you? Which is where you do that. But then in the classroom, tell us a bit more about that business. What have you particularly enjoyed about that module or about that side of things? Well, business is, um, the thing that I've enjoyed the most is how to build a business. Andrew here explained very well how to build a business, all the risks that come with building a business, um, how to manage it, and just basically how to start it. 
Amazing. It's, it's great to just hear from you as well. So your your journey from level two to level three. What are you doing after college? Give us a bit of insight after into college, that. After um, college, I want to go to Sunderland University to study um, event, and, uh, event managing. Okay. Event management, event nice. managing, whatever. Yeah, nice. And yeah. as as we discussed earlier, we've got our National Esports Forms campus up in Sunderland. So we look forward to seeing you up there. Don't be a stranger. When you come up, come and engage with us at the campus. You know, we've always got opportunities for volunteering and for, for students to come and get involved. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to, to seeing you there. Does Sunderland have an, an esports team as a uni? Do you know? They the do, university yeah. does, uh, yeah. 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 Does Sunderland see us, I'm pretty sure. You'll definitely see us. So, Sunderland see us is from the college. So it's I the college, college team is the Sunderland Sears, but the university have, have teams as well. So they, they run some of their, their esports societies run events from yeah. our campus. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see definitely. you there. I look forward yeah, to seeing you soon. See me there, yeah. um, in terms of that, that development, I think is, is clear and it's really exciting to follow your journey. What have you seen, Andrew, from, a, you know, not just from Cuba, but from other students in the years that you've been delivering this? What have you seen in terms of development of students that come in and then where they end up going? Yeah, there's a, there's a great example of actually one of the students from from Cuba's class um, started at a level one over in computing and spent two years on a level two getting knocked back and knocked back through results and attendance and punctuality, came to esports and is now one of the best students in college, um, is achieving straight distinctions, 99% attendance. So to see a student who realistically their prospects weren't looking great to a student who now will be joining Cuba at Sunderland University, studying events management and esports, um, and just seeing that kind of development from students who meet people with their same passion. It's one of the greatest things with the students coming into the classroom is yeah. they want to be there. There's not a day where they come in and they're like, oh, this subject's boring, because how can it be? It's video games, it's the game industry. Just because it's sports psychology or just because it's um, enterprise and entrepreneurship, it's still tied to that. We're not talking about getting cereal boxes on a shelf. We're talking about how we can create a product that appeals to them. Yeah, it's really exciting. I think that finding that passion point, it, you, and, and I can see it here today when the, you know th this is the culmination of that and it's the pinnacle. From uh, thinking about what you've got in terms of curriculum <coughs> and that development of students, I think what's quite unique about Burnley as a college, you sat here, you've got the football club, yeah, crest on your chest. Absolutely. So there's a link there. You've also, I know we work really closely with Williams together yep. and, and we've got the Williams Student Racing League and British Esports League that we, we run and, and you were down at the finals there. So can you just tell us a little bit, Andrew, about the programme and how you've linked into industry as well? Because it's one of the, again, it's one of the big things that colleges will sometimes say to us, you know, we're going to start an esports programme, but there isn't an esports employer or organisation on my doorstep. Yeah. Does it have to be an esports employer or what have you done in terms of those businesses to provide other industry links for students? So I think that's the, the beauty of the curriculum is it, it isn't an esports curriculum. It's so many different skills fitting into a course. So we work with a ton of employers. In terms of esports employers, we hold an industry forum um, that started this year. So we've had um, a, a document that we've sent out to businesses. So Corsair um, is one of them. We've sent it out to Scan, PC Specialist, um, obviously Williams. But if you think about it, the, some of those companies kind of not against each other, but they're in the same field, but they're still happy to help. This yeah. is the greatest thing about the esports industry is we can get opinions from tons of different companies who have conflicting interests, but because they want to see the industry grow, they're happy to help. Um, we've talked to local businesses as well, not esports businesses, everything from cafes. We did some mural painting, some charity mural painting that esports did. Um, and actually, Harley, who's one of the students that's here today, him and Archie went and did some um, a rehabilitation shelter. They did wow. some community work there. Amazing. So it, it fits in with everything. Um, Archie's just finished a two week placement at Epic, Epic Games, um, doing some content creation there. And we've got one of our students who's working with Williams with Sim staff, who I always use this as an example. He was a plastering student and now he's currently at Silverstone. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And that, I think that's the beauty. This, this whole thing that we're talking about, Pre-2018, 2019, it just didn't exist. Yeah. It wasn't a thing. And now we're here today and this is about real world learning, transferable yeah. skills, multiple different exit routes because the curriculum is so diverse in nature yeah. in, in those examples that you gave. Um, I think a lot of people forget as well the fundamental skills that are in there as well. So yeah. I'm sure Cooper won't mind me saying this, but if you haven't guessed, he's 
wasn't born in England, um, but we use fun, we use English as part of every single thing. We do academic writing, we do Harvard referencing, we do stuff that's going to prepare him for university. So there's not a lot of vocational courses where that happens. Obviously, the whole point of vocational is that it's practical. We managed to blend the practical with, you know, how do you research properly? How do you put your thoughts and your ideas into an executive summary? How do we put that into an essay? And that's that was going to be the next point to you, Kubert. How do you feel like you've developed just as an individual, as a person, over the time that you've been working with the team at the college and studying and being part of the esports team? Oh, I've developed a lot. Uh, especially my English has gotten a lot better. And as, I, uh, as I'm, I mentioned before, I've learned a lot about the industry, the business kind of side, um, event managing that we're going to do next year, which I'm very excited for because that's what I'm doing in university. Nutrition, game design, even even game design, which, which I don't really like, to be fair with you, but it is still pretty fun doing game design. And, and, it, and it's that understanding that that's part of the industry, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is part of the industry. We need to work with it, yeah, that we yeah. might not want yeah, to, to do that job, it, yeah. but that well, understanding. And I think, and, and credit to you as well, like to come on and, and be on camera and a microphone and be speaking in, in another language. I think that really shows that confidence and you develop those skills. So uh, massive well done. I can't wait to see what you do next. Please share that journey with us. Like I said, let us know when you come to Sunderland. I can't wait to see you guys out there on the stage in a, in a moment this afternoon. I'm really excited. Um, final thing, just from each of you. Kuba, first of all, from your point of view, if, if there are other students that are out there that are listening to this that might have been in a similar situation to you before college, that might be thinking about their options, what would your advice be if they're thinking about wanting to get involved in esports or study esports as a student? If you want to study esports, do not think twice, apply for it. There are so many opportunities. Just the lessons are fun. And for example, like the British esports, you can play with your mates and compete. Not just in Valorant, but you have um, Rocket League, Overwatch, League of Legends. And I think Apex is coming as well. Apex, yeah, we've done yeah, Apex, Apex Cup this year. Um, yeah. We'll be doing other titles as well next year. So yeah, there's, there's, all, there's, there's a lot of choice there. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, there's that's a lot. That's amazing. There are just so, so many opportunities. It is fun and you won't regret it. And then finally, Andrew, if you could just speak to, you know, anyone who's out there who might be a parent or yeah. who might be a working education, careers advisor, who might have that, you know, this is just video games. And can you give any message or any advice to anyone who's thinking about getting involved from an education perspective? Yeah, for parents, I mean, go, go engage with your local um, you know, education provider, go speak to them, go to open days, go to preview days. I know over at Burnley College, we have 12 open days a year. We have preview days. We have the year 11 program. We have the year 10 program. Um, and a lot of colleges offer that. It's not just us. So make sure you engage with that. Meet the students, find out what they think about it, because it quickly dispels the myth that we're here to play video games. Um, you know, our students develop a long way and they go into fantastic careers. We've had students go to BAE doing software development from an esports course. It's fantastic. For educators, for, for colleges or schools that are looking to do it, um, you know, speak to the industry, speak to the companies that want to help. We've had so much input from so many industry um, industry experts. Speak to them, find out what they think, and don't worry about your teaching staff who, you know, I'm not a great gamer. I'm not. I'm amazing at FIFA. <laughs> I'll take that one. Technically number three in the world, because um, I beat Brad Colston on stage, and I'll never let him forget that. Um, but you don't have to be a gamer to run an esports course. Do you know about business? Do you know about health? Do you know about media? Do you know about marketing? Perfect. That's what you're teaching. Amazing. Thank you both so much. Thanks for your time. Cheers, Callum. You've got a busy schedule, so I'll let you get back to it. And good luck this afternoon. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Need to win. Right, let's go sign some posters, mate. Let's do it.